Hey everyone, so today I'm going to be going over this statics example. It's probably the trickiest example I've seen, so it's a good example to do, and with that, let's get into it. Okay, so if f equals 100 newtons in the k direction, determine the couple moment that acts on the assembly. Express the result as a Cartesian vector. Remember, ba lies in the xy plane. Okay, and so looking at all of this, it can be intimidating because this bar here isn't aligned on one of the x or y axes, and so that's going to complicate our analysis. And so just a refresher on the couple moment here. When we're calculating couple moment, we use this formula most of the time, and that is m r1 minus r2 cross product with f. And so what this r1 and r2 are, are position vectors starting from the origin to the point of the forces acting. And so if I draw that on the diagram, it's going to look something like this. Right? And then what we're doing is we're saying, okay, if we subtract these two, we'll get the difference between them, and then we can find uh, the cross product of that with our force and that will give us our moment. And so trying to do that is our goal here. And the issue now is trying to find what our R1 and R2 values are because they're not given to us and it can seem complicated to, do, to get them from, ge from the geometry <laughs> and it is. And so I'm going to show you how to do that today and one key point to notice before we start on that is that here, oops, sorry, I'll actually just, there we go. Here, our red bar, our wrench, is actually passing over this uh, y axis here. So it's actually passing into the plane over here in the negative x. And so just keep that in mind when solving this problem because it will make our analysis a bit more complicated. And so I'm going to get rid of this formula, but don't worry, it'll, it'll come back at the end. And so uh, now I'm just going to bring up one of the diagrams that I drew before because it is quite time intensive to draw these diagrams, especially if I wanted to color code them all, so I just did it beforehand. And a note when you're making these diagrams yourself is to spend the time to really make a good diagram because I find when I make a good diagram that means I really understand what's going on and I'm familiar with the problem. So take the time to make a good diagram, but at the same time I get in a test situation it can be hard to do uh, to make everything perfect, so don't stress too hard, you know, if your lines aren't completely straight, but try your best to draw a good diagram. And then I'm just going to bring up some of the dimensions which we can get from here and the angles. And then I've pre-labeled these angles here because I know that we're going to need these angles, but really what I've done here is I've said, okay, from the x and the y axis here, I'm going to need to project each of these bars position vectors, which I've noted with the white here. This is going to be the line of the position vector right here. And so with that position vector, I've said, okay, I'm going to need angles that will allow me to project onto the axes from here. And so as you can see, I've gone from member BA to the position vector that I'm going to need, and in this case I've gone from uh, the other position vector to the angle x, y. And so because I can kind of use this, ang this bar b, a as an axis to project onto in this case, that'll simplify my analysis. Um, and so yeah, I'm just going to get into it here with the left, I'm, I'm going to split this into a I'll write it in teal. I'm going to split this into the right hand triangle, which will contain all of these lines. Um, and so I'll start with that guy first, and then later I'll do this left hand triangle. And so to get started with the right hand, I'll just pull that up in the bottom corner over here. And so looking at this side, this is the right hand side, or the, I'll write the RHS. Right? And we're trying to project uh, this vector here, this R1, I'll write this is our R1, this white line, 
onto the x and y so that we can have a Cartesian vector for it. And so the way that we're going to do that is say, okay, if we can find this phi here, this is our y axis, right? So then if we can find this phi, then we can use trig to project it onto the x and y, right? Because we've you should uh, have done that in previous examples here. And so what we're gonna say is, okay, well, I can find phi if I know gamma, and do I know gamma? No, but I can find it from trig here because I'm given this larger triangle. And so I can say that phi is equal to gamma minus 30. And then I can say that gamma is equal to tan inverse of two over three, minus 30, right? Because I can just write this instead of 300 as three and this instead of 200 as two. And so this is gonna give me 3.69 degrees as my angle for phi. And I'll draw a better phi there. There we go, phi. And so if that's my phi, now I can calculate the hypotenuse of this R1 and then use this angle to write my Cartesian vector as the projection. And so I'll show you what I mean here. 300 squared plus 200 squared gives me 360.6 as my hypotenuse. And so then I can write R1, R1 equals curly brackets. And then I'm going to include a negative here for my i direction because we are in the negative x plane, negative xy plane here. And so I'm going to include a negative 360.6 sine of my angle phi, which is 3.69, and then in the i direction. And I'm just going to actually write that unit vector so it's a bit more clear in a different color. Ah, there we go. In the I direction. And then I can write plus, because we are still in the positive Y direction, 360.6 cos of 3.69 in the j direction, right? And so that's our R1. And then I'm just gonna clean this up so that I have some more space to work with because now we're going to need to look at this left-hand side triangle. And so I'll just pull that up. And so I'm trying to find this guy over here. And so what I'm gonna do is same type of method, I need to find this R2 and this is 90. And so knowing what we did last time, we can do a very similar operation here. I can say theta equals alpha plus 30, and then I can write alpha as tan inverse two over 4.5 plus 30 equals 53.9 degrees. And so that's my angle theta. And then I can formulate the unit vector. I'll start over here. R2 being equal to 492.4 sine of 53.9 in the i direction. And remember here, we're still in the positive for both, so we don't need to add any negatives. So plus 492.4 cos of 53.9 in the j. 
And so I know this is getting crammed over here, guys. Sorry about that. It's just uh, with the constraints of the canvas, you know, I can't uh, I can't write beyond the canvas. So that's that's the issue that we face here. Um, but that's all good. And so now I'm just going to get rid of these uh, these two diagrams. Oops, not that guy. These two diagrams here. And I'm going to uh, take our two vectors. move them around and clean up the board. Okay, and so moving this guy around, we can just move him there and then pan over slightly to get this guy back. And I've actually cut off this guy when I moved him off screen. Oops. Okay, I'll just uh, I'll just rewrite this guy really quick. Sorry about that, guys. 360.6 R1. Sorry about that, guys. There we go. And so these are our two vectors. And so what you're going to see, because we know that we have M, right, equals R1 minus R2 cross f. And so doing that, we can then find that our uh, r1 minus r2 is going to be negative 421.4. I'll make that point a bit clearer so you don't get confused as a negative. Point four in the eye, and I think you get the idea, so I won't color code the vector symbols anymore, plus 70.10 in the J, plus zero in the K. And so that crossed with 100 in the K, because this is our force from the question description, equals 70, or sorry, 7.01 in the I, plus 42.1 in the J, plus zero in the K. And so that with Newton meters is our final answer. And so I know that was probably seemed uh, easier when I did it, but that's because I had pre-made all the diagrams and already knew what to do. So don't worry if you struggled with knowing what exactly to do. Well, actually, uh, don't not worry though either. You know, try and uh, try and work through this example without following my video now and see if you can do it. And so that's, um, that's the solution to the problem, and this is our answer. So thanks for watching, guys.